It's beyond my comprehension how unique this creation is and that we, we, we don't appreciate it. You know, if, if you look at the rainforest, have you ever looked at a movie or a documentary around the rainforest? Those little animals, that just, it's continuously raining in there, but the beautiful butterflies that were there, you know, little creatures, the birds. As paie lieflik hier by die berge in die somer aan is, sal as jy so achter rein na die berge, sien dier al die die view, die see, die bol gebouwe, die huise, al die welm, ons kan sê sien van die berg vanaan. En as sal lieflike tyd by die berg, speciaal somer aan. It's about being connected with nature and being able to see that you're not more important than nature is because you're part of nature yourself. You were created just like any other tree. And if you can be able to see that, you can be able to look after your environment, look after nature at the end of the day. And you will see that nature will look after you at the end of the day. I don't know the Western Cape so well, but in Durban I can walk around my yard and pick herbs that are seen as weeds. So blackjack, when it's young, is a delicious spinach. Uh, there's centilla which is the only plant that will rebuild your DNA, and that's in every garden in Durban. You know, so there are lots of plants out there in the bush and in suburban gardens that are edible, uh, but we either have forgotten them or we didn't know them in the first place. I haven't traveled the entire world and I haven't seen every city in the world, but I do believe that Cape Town is really one of the most incredible cities in the world. Whatever you're doing, you're always aware of the mountain and the sea, and a lot of people in Cape Town are constantly engaging and in enjoying that. First thing about when we think about biodiversity is that we are not separate from our environments, we're part of our environments. So we must understand that our entire system, which is completely interconnected, is what allows us to live the lives we do. And uh, in the case of climate change, every aspect of our biodiversity is offering opportunities to assist us in protect us. So, as we were saying before, wetlands provide opportunities so that floods, to attenuate floods. Um, if we have pollination systems, it means that our food security will be maintained. The word biodiversity is the fact that you have a huge range of different species. So from plants, different flower types, to all the animals, to the bird species, to the ocean systems, to the, the, the systems on our land. They're all soil interconnected systems. and right down into the soil. So it's, it's also to understand that you don't only just have the, the interactions between the plants and the flowers, but also that you have a huge diversity between one plant and another plant. And what is critical about maintaining that diversity is that if you only keep, you know, it's a whole breeding system and you, you want to keep that range of diversity so that you continue to, to generate and populate a healthy system. Um, and the, the more you narrow that, you, you tend to weaken the system. Cape Town is a unique place because A of its topography, the, the lie of the land, it's basically, if the sea level had to rise 50 or 60 meters, the Cape Peninsula would be an island, and it has historically been an island in the past. I think the Western Cape is very special in many ways. It's got a thousand kilometers of coastline, which is about a third of the total of South Africa. Our coastal environment is very, a very dynamic system, so it's driven by strong winds, um, and uh, those winds play an integral part in terms of what our landscape looks like. So in summer we have a very strong southeaster that blows and in winter we have very strong northwest winds that come with storm activity. So those combined uh, play a very big influencing role in terms of what our coastline looks like. So from a, from a city's perspective, it's a very dynamic coastline, it's a very interesting and varied coastline. Um, and I think it's a great asset to the city and, and quite frankly it, it really defines what Cape Town is. It's a central sense of place of what Cape Town is, our coastline. So I think we are fortunate in Cape Town to have this incredible environment and it goes further than that, of course, it, it's tied with our Mediterranean climate. The fact that we are sitting at a very special point within the Feinbos Kingdom, which is the smallest kingdom in the world and the highest uh, number of species. It's, it's so species rich, it's, it's just an incredible opportunity. And because of the richness of our geology and plants, there is a richness in, in these other species as well. So. We've basically got the Cape Flats area, which is uh, its own ecosystem. And then we've got the, the area around the mountain, which is one of the richest ecosystems in the world as far as plants. It's one of the uh, great plant kingdoms, two and a half thousand species from Cape Town to Cape Point.
Uh, it's got this unique floristic kingdom, the, the, the Feinbos biome, which is sort of recognized internationally. There's six plant biomes in the world, and uh, the Feinbos biome is the smallest one in the world with the highest number of species. So that's quite special. The Feinbos floral kingdom is the most prolific of floral kingdoms. I mean, you can get more than 100 species of plants growing within one square meter of each other. We have more plants growing on top of Table Mountain, more species, than the entire United Kingdom. Feinbos is a fire-driven system, so Feinbos needs fire from a biodiversity uh, viewpoint. If you have too frequent fires, your, the amount of biodiversity is lowered dramatically. We have approximately 1% of our coastal Feinbos left, and that is from Musenberg to Gordons Bay. 1% of our coastal Feinbos. Of all the hundreds of thousands of hectares of coastal Feinbos, we have 1% left. And the problem is now that people are trying to develop it and finding all kinds of ways to develop it. We've also got the problem of baden Powell Drive going past and the vibrations on the cars are causing the cliffs to fall. And as they fall, they're of course taking the ground away. So our, our famous area is being depleted as well. Fires in that area is also great, a great problem. So um, we need to preserve this last heritage, this last bit of coastal famous. If we lose that, uh, it's lost forever. Cape Nature manages probably 90% 90, 90 of the Feinbos in the, in the Western Cape. So we're one of the only, if not the only, organization in the world that manages one plant kingdom, you know, which is also quite motivating.